happy 2023. Hey, Jenny. Another year is gone. I know. I, I haven't seen you since last year. What was that? I haven't seen you since last year. Oh my gosh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That joke gets me every year and I feel like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, so I always get really excited around New Year's. I don't know about you, like something about like starting new goals always gets me so inspired. <laughs> kind of peters out, but you know, the first couple of days it's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's like a new beginning. It is. Yeah. yeah. I like, even okay. clean my room. <laughs> Yes, the spring cleaning starts January 1st. Oh my gosh, it hits you so hard after Christmas. I know, my res- room turned into like a disaster zone over Christmas. It was just like stuff everywhere, mm-hmm. like people's presents and this and that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have time because Christmas is so crazy. So oh was yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> it was like a bomb went off. <laughs> exactly, I totally feel that. And then after Christmas, it's like I didn't even unpack all of my gifts. Like they just sat in a stack in my room and everything just like accumulated, you know, clean clothes and laundry and everything. It's just, uh, but then of course that week after Christmas and new year's is like, what day is it anyway? I don't even know what year it is right now. Yeah. Like the week between Christmas and new year's is just, I feel like that was crazier than like the prep up to Christmas. Yeah. It was like family events and this and that. Mm -hmm. And it still feels like you're on holiday. So I was like, oh, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. And I'm like writing my Kindle mm-hmm. bell at the last second. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. <laughs> I have, I have commitments. <laughs> <laughs> don't even get me started on my diet. Like that's the last week has been so bad. So bad. I've eaten my weight in sugar, I feel like. And I normally don't eat sugar at all. Like no desserts. And so it's like my body is like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. (laughs) How do you do that? No desserts. Like, how do you satisfy the sweet tooth? Fruit. Okay. And I don't limit myself to carbs because apparently if you cut out carbs, then it makes you crave sweets more. Oh, okay. See, I'm I'm like doing like a, a redo on my eating habits this year. Hopefully I'll stick to it this time. So I'm trying to cut out sugar and I'm like, Oh, this is painful because I've been eating like sugar cookies every day. Yeah, it's so hard to go cold turkey with sugar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so carb, like, you know, like potatoes. And then apparently if you supplement magnesium, that helps with sugar cravings. I have to be careful with magnesium because like too much, it like gives you like digestive issues. And then the other thing is coffee and tea and like chocolate. Well, chocolate is obviously already sweet, but like that stuff that has like the caffeine in it can apparently like deplete your magnesium and cause sugar cravings. So oh, I don't okay. really drink coffee and tea a lot, but like, I don't know if somebody does and then they try cutting that out. Maybe it really does help sugar cravings. Yeah. Before. That's what I've heard. <laughs> oh, See, I feel like I'm learning a whole bunch of new stuff and like trying to cut things out. I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that that interacted with that thing. And ah, yeah. the body is crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I thought writing was bad enough, and then the body got complicated. (laughs) So beyond health resolutions, we have other kinds of resolutions for the new year. Writing and reading resolutions. What do yours look like this year? So for reading resolutions, I'm pretty much doing the same thing as I did last year. Last year, I'm on Goodreads. So last year I set my goal really low to 30 because I didn't want to have a goal I had to hit because I feel like that makes me read just to hit a goal. So, but I still like the tracking aspect and I wish Mm -hmm. that Goodreads had a feature where you could just track without setting a goal, but they don't. So I thought, well, I'm going to beat the system. I'm going to set it like crazy low that I know I'm going to read more than 30 books. And then that way it will just track for me. And it worked really well. I read so many more books the, uh, last year in 2022. And I also started DNFing, which I've never done before. But I found yeah. that DNFing helped me read more books because whatever I was reading, I loved it. And I would read it really quickly rather than like dragging mm-hmm. through a book. <laughs> like I don't really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I so feel that. Year, 
Um, same thing. I set my goal low. I think I put it at 50 because I was like, I feel like that's still a low goal for me. Yeah. And I'm just going to read whatever I want. Like maybe read like more that. nonfiction, but mm-hmm. I'm not. I just want to read like whatever I want. That's my goal. <laughs> what about you? What's your yeah. reading? No, I totally agree with that. Last night there was a book I had pre-ordered and started reading. And I got like, I don't know, a third of the way through it. And I was like, why am I sitting here pushing myself to finish a book that I'm not enjoying? Like I'm bored and I'm not enjoying it. I'm like, I've gotten a third of the way through it. I can tell you now I'm not going to love it. So I was like, I just like kind of quickly skim read to the end to see how it ended. And I was like, hey, we're done. So I was like, you know what I say? Like, why waste time in your life reading books you don't want to read? Um, So that's probably one of my goals reading this year is only reading things I want to read rather than feeling like, oh, somebody else recommended this book. I feel like I have to finish it now. And it's like, if you don't enjoy it, why bother spending your time on it? Yeah. I mean, I don't, as far as like number of books, I don't usually set a goal because I read probably a book to two books a week sometimes, depending on how long they are, because that's what I spend my evenings doing in bed. I'm just like reading until one o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, I don't even need a goal. <laughs> it's probably going to be over 100 anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Reading is just so fun. And it's technically work. You know, if you're a writer, it's technically work too. So <laughs> I like that. I've never thought about it that way, but I like that. It gives me an excuse to do it more often. <laughs> it's research, guys. It's research. It is. It is. <laughs> That's where we get inspired. That too, yeah. And it's how you learn your craft. Like, because I was homeschooled, we did not have a very rigorous English education Mm -hmm. because I was always reading and writing. So my mom didn't really assign me too much English because I was already doing that myself. You know, Mm -hmm. I kind of learned grammar and the rules of language just by reading. I could not tell you, like, the here and the why and all of that, but I know what a good sentence looks like and I know what a bad sentence looks like and I can fix it. I maybe couldn't tell you all the like articles of speech, but I have to brush up on that. Like I did learn it at some point. It's not like my mom was like totally. (laughs) 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 She did do a little with us, but just not really intensive because I was already so interested in that. And I learned how to write by reading and reading good examples of good writers you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. It's like, uh, whenever I take horse lessons, my coach always tells me that some people have like a natural feel. Some people know all the vernacular and they can tell you all the rules, but then some people, they can't tell you what it's called, but they know what it feels like when it's right. And it's like, sometimes you just have that instinct. You're like, I don't know what it's called when the grammar is wrong, but I know that sounds wrong. Yes. (laughs) What a good story is. I don't know all the vocabulary for it, but I know what a good one is kind of thing. Can't yeah. Teach that stuff. No, you can't. Although, I mean, I would say like one of my dreams is to like become an editor and as an editor, I'm probably going to need to like actually be able to tell people yeah. you know, <laughs> the correct language. I can't be just like, this is wrong. Just trust me on it. This is wrong. <laughs> I don't have any proof or any backup, but it's just wrong, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like our reading goals are pretty big. I feel like reading goals are pretty basic anyway. I mean, when you're a reader, it's kind of like you just decide how many books you want to read and that's pretty much it. Yeah. You just do it because you love it. Like I would never not read. So it's like, I don't even really need to set a goal. It's just like wait for bookstagram that we do this stuff. (laughs) (laughs) What about our writing goals for the year? Those are much more complicated for me. Yes. Yes. So my writing goals are of course, to like keep up my Kindle Bella. I'm not sure when season one is going to end because I I'm pretty much pantsing it because, you know, I read a lot of stuff about episodic writing and they recommended not planning out too much because you'll get reader feedback and this and that. So I thought, OK, this is my excuse to pants it. So I really have no idea when season one will end. I'm not worried, though, because I feel like I'll know. But yeah. so that's one of my goals. My other goal is to finish a rom-com that I am working on that I started drafting this month. So more about that later. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at that. If I get in other projects, I would be great. But mostly I just want to have that ready to publish this year. Yeah. You know, that's, I'm going to be laser focused. 
because yeah. I'm not very focused. So I need to like really focus on this right now. Yeah. I like that very clear and concise. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Of course, I went ahead and made mine way more complicated than that. Well, your years. I'm excited. Um, I mean, I kind of was like, okay, I guess I almost looked at it more habitually. Like, what habits do I need to change with my writing? Because, like, I, like, I've made my schedule for what I want to publish and when. But I guess for me, I do that all the time anyway. That didn't feel like a, a New Year's, like, thing for me. That was just, like, what I normally do anyway. So for resolutions, as far as writing, I was like, okay, what habits need to change? What things do I need to do differently this year kind of thing is what I was looking at. So I was being a little bit more critical on myself. Like, what am I doing wrong that I need to do better this year? Um, which I actually found a really interesting article about habits on uh, the New York Times where it was talking about how you have pinpoint the habit that you want to change and then you pinpoint the emotion that causes that habit. Like, what are you trying to fulfill with that habit? Like, if you're scrolling too much on the internet, maybe the... Um, the emotion that's triggered by that is you feel isolated. You know, you're wanting to communicate with people and what can you do instead of just scrolling on Instagram, that kind of thing. Um, so for me, it was mostly distractions that I need to change this year because <laughs> I tend to want to distract myself a lot. Uh, I was like, okay, I tend to, when I get stressed out while I'm writing, I'll stay up until like three o'clock in the morning to finish whatever I'm doing and like push and push and push because I'm like, well, I don't want to be stressed out tomorrow having not finished this. And it's like, yes, but then, Rachel, we get burnout. And it, it's really hard. <laughs> so one of my goals this year is to listen to my body more and be like, okay, am I actually saving myself stress right now? Or am I causing more stress? Because I'm going to have to fix what I'm doing later anyways, because it's trash, because it's 3 o'clock in the morning. So it's like, okay, I need to learn to take breaks and actually, like, you know, step back for a minute and then come back to it tomorrow, which I have a hard time with. Um, it could be a great thing, but it can also be a really bad thing. And then also I get distracted during writing breaks when I'm sprinting, like I'll write for 20 minutes and then I'll set the timer for like 10, 15 minutes and go do something else for a little bit. But sometimes I don't set the timer and then I'm just scrolling on Instagram and then it's like an hour and a half later and I'm like, oh yeah, I should be sprinting. <laughs> so my plan is to actually set timers for my writing breaks this year so that I actually stay on track more frequently than before because... I hate wasting that much time and then you feel like you wasted the entire day just on Instagram for no reason and now you're way behind, which is just annoying. Yeah, and then I had like separate like quarterly goals, which is like I wanted to follow a writing schedule four days a week and like stop writing by like eight o'clock at night so that I'm not into the night working ridiculously. And then I was like one day a week I can stay up late and work if it feels necessary. But for four days a week, I want to actually be done at the correct time because I don't want to get burnt out so frequently this year. Because that was a big issue for me last year was pushing myself too hard and then not wanting to do anything <laughs> because you're exhausted. So those are those are kind of the basics of my goals other than, you know, the projects that I want to finish on certain timelines. Oh, yeah, I actually um, am doing like a writing work day too. Uh, my sister and I decided that we were going to have like a work day and we we're going to start out like slow because like it's always easier to set like a smaller goal that you'll stick yeah. to. And then if you get into the habit, you can make it longer. So we're like, OK, two days a week, we're going to walk to the library because the library is it's not that far. So we get in our exercise yeah. and we're going to be there from 10 until 2 and like. Mm -hmm. That's so that's the work day. And then yeah. another thing I'm doing is I'm logging my hours. I'm like, okay, I need to make like a time clock for myself. Mm. That way I'm writing down like how many hours it I write every day, how many hours yeah. I spend making content, how many hours so I can see like how long things are taking me. And my goal is to get like I want to have like four hours of writing logged in like every single day. Like that's my ultimate okay. goal. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, the tracking part is really helpful because sometimes you like spend a whole day working and then you get to the end of the day and you're like, I don't even know what I did or how much time I spent doing any of that. Yeah. So it's nice to have like the evidence of what you did and for how long. I like that. Mm -hmm. I tried doing a, like I made a grid for myself where I'd write down the, down the day and time and like when I clocked in, when I clocked out and all that stuff. 
which I had a hard time keeping up with. So now what I've been doing is I just write down the date in my journal and then I write down every accomplishment as I accomplish them throughout the day. So I can keep track of everything I did that day, even if it was like, oh, I spent 20 minutes creating posts for Instagram or whatever so that I know exactly. Because partly sometimes it's like unless you check something big off the list, you feel like you didn't do anything. So it's <laughs> nice to have the affirmation of like seeing it. They're like, oh, OK, I did do stuff today. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree, especially like in this kind of business where you're doing so much. I mean, aside writing and Instagram, you know, there's, I don't know, email newsletters and there's setting up yes. different accounts for this and that, the other thing, and like doing research on like different platforms. Or, I mean, if the list goes on and on, so yeah. just keeping track and writing down can at the very least, just make you feel like you accomplished something. Yes. <laughs> I totally agree. I saw somebody else post on Instagram, like all the things they had done in that day. And I was like, wow, girl, you do a lot. And then I was like, I think I do a lot too. I just never write it down. So I don't mm -hmm. like realize how much I do. And it's very like motivating to see, oh, okay, I'm doing stuff. Or like to see one day how I really didn't do much of anything today. Yeah. And and those days feel the busiest yeah <laughs> yes you just did a million little tasks that really weren't important or that you probably shouldn't mm -hmm. have done at all but you mm -hmm. feel like you're busy mm -hmm. but you really didn't accomplish anything yeah. <laughs> that's the worst when somebody asks you like what did you do today and you're like I don't know but I was really busy whatever <laughs> it was just take my word for it man you said uh when we talked last week or whatever it was something about a year or a word for the year do you um what yeah. was your word for the year I can't so remember my word for the year is focus and for me that's about saying no because I have a million different business ideas a million different things that I'm going to start up I'm going to do a podcast I'm, which I'm doing but yeah <laughs> I'm going to do podcasts I'm going to do YouTube I'm going to have this business and I'm going to make this for people and I'm going to do that for people and my problem is I have so many ideas that I never actually finish one you know because I don't I'm always in the planning process of like a million ideas so yeah. I told myself this year you know you're going to pick one thing and you're not even going to think about the other things until you've finished it because yeah. You know, once it's done, it kind of like sits there and it has its own momentum and it keeps going. And then you can turn your focus to something else. Like I learned by releasing my Kindle Vela this year or starting it, I guess I should say, because it releases every week. Yeah. Um, once I set it all up, I set up the thing. I did the launch. I created all like the graphics and everything for it. Now it just is going. So it's, it, it's yeah. like pretty much done. Like obviously I have to keep mm -hmm. on top of it, but like it's done. So now I need to focus on launching something else and then I'll keep up yeah. with that. But like, it's like the brainstorming and the launch that's the hardest. But once you do that, you just have to keep it going. Yeah. So my focus, and I guess this is a writing goal is I need to finish and launch my website and I'm going to have maybe a service or two We'll keep that under wraps for now. I'll maybe have like a service or two on there. Yeah. And once that's up, you know, it will just keep on going. And then I can focus on other projects if I want to. But yeah, that's my goal. I have to say no to all these other ideas because otherwise I'm never going to achieve what I really want to achieve. Yes, I totally get that. That wasn't my word for the year, but I could definitely empathize with that so much because I feel like we watch a lot of DIY shows and I feel like every time we watch one, the person doing the show, like they end up opening a store or opening their own line of something. And after a while they have like 10 different things going on. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? How do you keep track of these 10 different like side hustles you're doing? But now I understand because I, <laughs> every day there's like a new idea of, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. And then it's just, you spread yourself so thin if you try to do like start I think what you said is true. Like if you're trying to start too many things at one time, it's hard to really follow through on any of them. But once you have some of them going, then you're like, okay, this is kind of a little bit on autopilot now. I can start something mm -hmm. new. I can start something new kind of thing. So I like that kind of like focusing on getting things actually moving and then being like, okay, now I can start something. I like that idea. Yeah. 
I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to that, especially in a self-employed business. Yes, yes. (laughs) So what is your word? Mine is focus. So what is yours? I usually don't have one, but then when you mentioned that you had one, I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll make one this year. Because most of the time I feel like I make it too big of a deal and too complicated and I think about it too hard. And I'm like, well, I don't know what my word should be. And so it, it just, anyway, that's my thing. I make things more complicated than they need to be. Um, but then I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, I think this year my word is going to be confidence, which like, I guess there are different types of confidence. Um, and the one I'm thinking more of is like the confidence to like step out more and like, I guess have more confidence in my own abilities. Um, Cause like, last year was a you know big change like this time last year I hadn't even published a book yet and now I've published two and like life just feels so different than it did last year but really it's like the last couple of months that have felt the most different I think getting involved in projects with other people um, and like starting things on my own being like okay well I'm just gonna go ahead and do this thing has been like a huge growing thing for me which I want to continue into this year um, instead of I guess confidence in like in some ways stepping into leadership roles sometimes or like, you know, asking people to join in certain things instead of kind of being so shy about it and like kind of like, oh, no, I can't do those things. This year I want to be like, no, I can. I can do those things. Because last year, I would think it was February or March, I um, had like this just this brain I'm like I'm gonna be independent and I'm gonna be confident on my own and so I got a hotel room by myself with my dog for the weekend and we just stayed together and I just wrote and hung out for the weekend which was great but then I didn't really keep that momentum the rest of the year but I want to do that this year like keep that attitude of no I can actually do these things so that kind of confidence is what I'm hoping to do this year which I think will help like with starting new things and like even doing this is a big deal like I wouldn't have done this this time last year are you kidding me there's no yeah. way. <laughs> I was scared of getting on Instagram stories this time last year. <laughs> and boy, have things changed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Especially, you know, start publishing a book, starting a podcast. People, like, there's always in the back of your head, like people are going to be like, oh, who do you think you are? Mm. Like, you can publish a book or who's going to listen to you? Like, you're having a yeah. podcast, you know? Yeah. But, Yeah, just having that confidence. And for me, a lot of it is I do listen to really small podcasts like of people I know on Instagram. And like I enjoy that more than whatever. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of great, like huge, big writing podcasts, but I don't really care because I don't know those people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So um I I looked at my own experience and I read a lot of indie indie books and I do listen to smaller podcasts and I do support these small businesses and I think that gave me a lot more confidence because I was like you know why not then if I do it other people might do and if it really goes that badly you can always close down your store you can close down your podcast you can close down whatever you want you know but like you should at least give it a try yeah yeah Failure is not the worst thing because at least you've made an attempt and we're like, no, that's not for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know because yeah. doing even publishing a book in some ways is like. I mean, everybody knows imposter syndrome is like a big thing. You're like, <laughs> who am I to do this? Like, nobody's going to read this. I can't do this. But I remember when I first decided to do it, I um, one of my favorite authors is Camille Peters. And I picked up one of her books and I was like, I think she's self-published. And I looked and I was like, oh, she is. And I was like, if she can do this, I can do this. And then I was like, okay, we're doing this. So just the confidence, I think us being like, just people that other people know on Instagram. Like, I think that that's like a, people might be a, see it and be like, oh, well, you know, they're doing it. It can't be, you know, that complicated or that scary or whatever. So I hope everybody has that energy going into this year. Nothing is that scary. You. Yeah, yeah I, I, I hope so, too, because, yeah, a lot of times, you know, people lead by example. And if they see yeah. someone doing it, too, then they'll be like, OK, we can do this. And yes. I think that's a yes. good thing. And I, I do like that about Instagram. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes it's easy to look at other people and think, well, they're more tenacious than me or 
you know, they're more talented than me, or that's like giving excuses for reasons why they're able to do all of these things that I don't think I'm capable to do. And it's like, no, they're just like you. They just decided to do it. So all you need to do is just decide to do it. Have the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great word for the new year. I really like yeah. that. Yeah. Hopefully I managed to actually stick to it. <laughs> Yeah. So speaking of sticking to it, I think we talked a little bit about this, but like, mm -hmm. what are your plans for how you're actually going to stick to your goals? You talked a little about the emotion and kind of figuring yeah. out behind the habits, but when it comes to you know other things, are there more things that you've learned, more things you can pull out of your toolbox to kind of help you sticking to these goals? Yeah. That um, I think for one thing, now that, like, it's kind of st scary starting out on Instagram, especially Bookstagram. There's, like, so much vernacular you don't know. And there's <laughs> just, like, like, I remember when I first heard of, like, TBR and stuff, and I was like, what is that? And I had to Google it. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't know these words. Um, but now that I've been on it for a while, having that community is really nice because you can kind of be honest and be like, hey, I'm struggling with continuing this behavior I was hoping to continue. And it's been, a you know, an issue for me. And then people, you know, come out and say, well, I'm feeling the same way that you are. And it's not as, it's a lot more motivating that way. So I think that's one of the ways to help um, continue those good habits is to just be honest and vulnerable on like Instagram or Discord or whatever you're in. And just be like, hey, I'm struggling. Anybody else struggling too? And then just knowing that you're all in the same boat can be really motivating to be like, okay, we can do this. We know that we're all together doing this thing. So we can, we can handle this. Um, as far as like, I think, all in all, my biggest goal is trying to find a balance between pushing myself and also not pushing myself to the breaking point because I hate the feeling of being in the breaking point where you're just like so overwhelmed and so stressed like all the time. And I don't want to be in that position again this year because I did it quite a few times last year. So I know it's going to be a struggle for me to maintain that as the year continues on. Um, I think for one thing, having multiple projects going this year instead of just one thing like last year, I think will be nice because it gives your brain a break to like kind of multitask and be like, okay, I, I need a break from this thing. I'm going to go work on something else for a while. Um, can be a really nice thing. I think also I've learned <laughs> do not set up pre-orders until you're ready to publish people. It's not <laughs> smart because <laughs> then you're like assigned this due date and no matter what happens you have to fit into this due date because you can only push it back so far um so that's definitely something I'm taking into this year is I will never put pre-orders up again until I'm close to publishing it and knowing that okay I will be ready because like with this third Legends of Avalon book I'm already preemptively stressed and I haven't even started writing it yet because I just know that it's going to be a lot of work and that I, I haven't given myself really the amount of time that I wish I had. Like, there's not going to be a lot of downtime in between, which sucks. But that's just kind of where we are. But I've learned not to do that again. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to maintain my my hopes to give myself breaks in the process of that. Because I'm just going to feel like I've got a gun to my head the whole time. But um, I think juggling multiple projects will help to give me breaks to think on other things. I think reaching out to the writing community will be really nice to let people know, hey, I'm struggling. Are you struggling too? Um, and I think giving yourself time in the day to do things that are unrelated to your job, which I've always been really bad about, but like doing a, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like from dawn until dusk, I'm just working, you know, and it's like, that's my identity now is my job because I spend so much time in it. And it's like, but find other things to do. Like even it's for 20 minutes, an hour, just to kind of let your brain decompress because your brain is like a muscle and it does get exhausted and it can't go anymore so it's like okay do a puzzle draw watch tv just something for like 20 30 minutes in the evening or something just to let it like chill I'm gonna try to keep up with that behavior and hopefully that'll help me to not get quite so stressed throughout the new year we'll see I don't know I don't know man <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, about you? Like, yeah, <laughs> <okay. laughs> and I think that's really important with goals too is being flexible and adaptable. Like, yeah. you could start off with something and it might even work. 
but mm-hmm. something down the line changes and it doesn't work. The ability to be like, okay, I still want the same endpoint, but maybe this method isn't working anymore. Maybe it yeah. never worked, mm-hmm. but you figure out a new method and you still get there. That's like the really important part. Yeah. I think that's why most resolutions people don't stick to them is because it's like, if you don't do it the way you planned on doing it, you're like, oh, well that failed. Mm-hmm. We're just going to, you know, call time of death on that <laughs> New Year's resolution oh, for the yeah. year. Rather than just, you know, pivoting and adapting and trying something different in order to attain the same thing. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many different ways to accomplish one thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I really liked about being homeschooled is like everybody learns different. Yeah. And, and, you know, instead of having one teacher teaching 30 kids one method to do something, mm-hmm. um, it was a lot more individualized. So I could do things however I wanted to. And as long as I got to the right point, it didn't matter. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that, and we do that as writers. I mean, we have plotters and we have pancers and we have planters mm-hmm. and everybody does things so different, but mm-hmm. everybody comes out with a novel. You yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. You get to the same end game, but it's just depends, you know, you do whatever mm-hmm. you have to do to get you there, whatever that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you? How are you going to um, keep up with your New Year's resolutions and goals? So I think for me, the biggest thing is the morning. The first thing Mm -hmm. I do sets the entire day. So in December, I read a really good book called Happy Jobs by Hannah Hatson. I don't know if you know her on Instagram. I met her a couple years back and she just released this book. And so I was an art reader for it. And I was so happy I was an art reader for it because it just changed how like I just do things Mm -hmm. um and so she talked about this method called the 20 20 20 method where um and I'm that's in uh somebody wrote that in another book I'm not quite sure but I'm sure if you look it up you'll find the author of that method and everything so he looked I think it was a he could have been a she but I think it's a he so he looked at the habits of highly successful people and noticed that they had very like rigid morning routines. Like Mm -hmm. when they woke up, they always did these certain things. And so the 20, 20, 20 method is you have, I might be, this is how I do it. I am pretty sure this is how the method goes, but it might be a little different. So you start your day with like 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of meditation, and then 20 minutes of personal growth. So I'll wake up and I'll do, 20 minutes of exercise and then I do 20 minutes for like Bible, whatever, like devotions Mm -hmm. I'm doing and just quiet here. And then for my personal growth, I chose, I want 20 minutes of writing, you know, but you could do whatever you want. Like people listen to a podcast, work on a skill. But for me, I'm like, I need to improve my writing. So that's my personal growth. And it's been really great. I, when I started out, I did 10, 10, 10. Because I was like, I want to stick to this, you know, mm-hmm. even if I wake up, and I'm so busy. Some some days I'll even wake up and I'll do five, five, five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to tell my brain, like, yeah. this is what's important to you. Taking care of your body, your relationship with God and your writing. Mm-hmm. Like those three things mm-hmm. are like the core of everything you do. So yeah. just telling your brain, like, we prioritize this. Like we don't get on our phone first thing in the morning. We don't yeah. do anything first thing in the morning. And that really helps and then you get so much done before eight o'clock or whatever it is yeah. and it's just motivating the rest of the yeah. day yeah I <laughs> like that a lot very simple and like straight to the point I'm very uh regimented and I very habitual and so I do the same things all the time but I would say morning routine has been hard for me because like I get up and first thing I do at seven o'clock in the morning I come into the office I sit down and I write and I'll do 20 minutes for instance until like nine And then I'm like, okay, I'll go get breakfast or whatever. But as far as what time of day to do devotionals and what time of day to do some kind of physical activity or workout, that kind of thing is hard to figure out where to fit it in your structure of the day. So I kind of like the idea of starting there and like kind of getting your brain on the right wavelength and then being like, okay, I'm ready to write now versus I just got out of bed. My brain is (laughs) slightly Mm -hmm. not functioning yet but we're gonna write anyway I like that kind of like setting yourself up for success first I feel like that's a good idea I like that yeah yeah I will say 
man, I thought I was really out of shape because, you know, I, I hadn't worked out in a long time. Doing yoga first thing in the morning is rough. <laughs> it's like my body, I'm like, I'm so stiff. And I thought it was me being really out of shape. Yeah. And then one day I did yoga in the afternoon, like I did an extra session. I was like, wow, this is so easy. Mm. <laughs> so I think I still prefer afternoon workout just because yeah. my brain is pretty much done by then. But my body, like that's the best time to work out. Cause like you don't want your brain going while you're working yeah. out because then your brain's like, this is too hard. Please stop this. My muscles are hurting. Yeah. So I'm like, I'd rather do that when my brain is fried and I can just like let the physical take over. So mm-hmm. I still prefer like my main workout session in the afternoon, which I'm going to try and stick to. But I think just doing like a little warm out in the morning. Is yeah, like, like a little stretch. Like 10 minutes, yeah. Whatever. But yeah, it's painful. Like first morning yoga. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> I think that's true. I think that's true that it's it's your body's like resp- cuz like when you first wake up in the morning if you like try to touch your chin to your chest and your neck is just like what what are you what are you doing? Mm-hmm. We're not ready for this yet. Yeah. Like you're like, just you so just like feel- stiff. Yes, yeah, stiff. Yeah. 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 So I do feel better. I'm not as out of shape as I thought cuz when I do it in the yeah. afternoon it's not nearly so bad. Yeah. It was just the morning, but <laughs> first I was a little worried because like I used to do figure skating. I used to be so strong and flexible and all this stuff. I was like, man, like I really lost it. Like I can't even get through a morning yoga session. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> yoga is no joke. <laughs> yeah, I think I could see like doing like a stretching video or something in the morning for like 10 minutes or whatever to kind of like let your brain slowly wake up. But I agree. I I would probably rather because I've been trying to do my workouts around 11, 11 or 12 in the afternoon, because I'm like, at this point, I've been riding for a few hours. I need a break and I'm awake enough that I can actually work out without hating the world, <laughs> because when it's first thing in the morning, I'm like, I hate everything. This sucks. Um, <laughs> and I've been doing I've been doing Pilates videos, which I'm like, there is no way that mm-hmm. first thing in the morning I have yeah. the wherewithal to do Pilates. There's just, it's yeah. just not happening. So I think doing like a stretching video or like a really short yoga video, something like more calm and easy going would make a lot of sense first thing in the morning just to like slowly wake up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like going for a walk or something. Yeah. You know, getting in the sunlight right when you wake up yes. is really important too because it drains all the cortisol. You wake up with all the cortisol, but if you expose yourself to bright light and like move, I think it is, it helps drain that faster and then you end up having a better day or something you're like you're so knowledgeable on the body I'm like what I don't know any of these things <laughs> this isn't me this is my fiance he's like obsessed oh. With, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great well at least you know a lot of stuff yeah. <laughs> but you never know I mean like we people used to think like bloodletting was good for you so mm-hmm. for all I know in 100 years they're like oh that was like that's Total. true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at one point they were like, yes, lay your babies on their back. And they're like, no, lay them on your stomach. No, lay them on the back again. No. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Nobody yeah. really knows anything. We're all just guessing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, exercise is something I really do want to try and do like exercise in the afternoon as well as my morning routine. Like I was thinking, you know, you could take like a dance class on YouTube. There's so many different things that I could do to get in a workout. Like, I feel like I have all these resources, like exercise videos on YouTube, and I never take advantage of them. It's kind of, you know, I think it's just kind of drilled in so hard that like you go to the gym and like you lift weights or you run on the treadmill. Like that's just kind of like the stereotypical workout kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I used to do for a long time but for me I have a hard time being honest about how hard I'm really working when I'm the one in charge of the workout versus when I take a class I'm like oh okay I'm doing what you're doing when you're doing it and so that's a lot easier for me to like be held accountable so I do Pilates videos on Beachbody because I'm like okay I just turn it on and I just do what you tell me that's Mm -hmm. a lot easier for me I can't really lie about it. I'm doing exactly what I'm told to do. I think a dance one would be fun. I never even thought about that. Yeah. And I'm a horrible dancer. So I thought, oh, this will be great. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it'll be working on two things at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. There you go. Like learning and exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I just feel like, especially as a writer, um, you're just so sedentary writing yes. or making content and all this mm-hmm. stuff. Maybe I should make more hiking content. Mm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that will get me hiking. <laughs> so do whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> just say you're doing it for the gram yeah um but yeah it's so sedentary and I used to work as a nurse's assistant and so I was always on my feet I was always running up and down the floor and so it's like I didn't really need to work out because I was so active and I did but I was so active I didn't need to and I just kind of miss having an active job but this is my passion writing is my passion that's like what I'm called to do every time I give it up yeah it, it, it comes back and it finds me. And yeah. I know it's like what God placed in my heart to do. So I have to find a, a exercise way of like taking care of my body that works with writing. You know, I can't yeah. just be like, oh, yeah. I need to go get a physical job. I have yeah. to discipline myself to yeah. still be active while being a writer, you know? So. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I get that. Cause when I was teaching, I was up all the time walking around, you know, running around the room, talking to kids out at recess and everything. But then while I was working as a teacher, I also was always writing during my breaks, during recess, during lunch. I was writing every single second I could get in the day. Like that was the thing I wanted to be doing, even though I had to be teaching. So it's like, I'm not going back to having a different Mm -hmm. job. So it's like, you do kind of have to figure out how to make it work. I know some people use like the stationary bikes with the table on top. Yeah. So they can have their computer they're writing, which I so want to do. I don't know how much they are, and I probably don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but right now, what I do a lot of the time, especially if I'm feeling, um, like, kind of burnt out or, like, I've hit a wall with writing or e- anyway, I either will go to my whiteboard because I stand up while I'm using it, and, like, I'll brainstorm that way because then I'm standing up, I'm moving yeah. around, and it kind of gets things flowing better, or... If I need to like legit be writing the manuscript, I have a couple of pieces of wood that I will put over like the bars of the treadmill and I'll set my my keyboard on it and have my laptop there and I will type while I'm walking. And like even if I'm walking like a mile an hour, two miles an hour, at least I'm still moving and that will help too because it's like, okay, at least I'm doing something while I'm writing. Yeah. That's a great idea. I remember, I think it was over the summer during one of our writing sprints, Mm -hmm. I was writing standing up. And what I did is I have my keyboard and it was set at like the tallest setting. So like you were standing because we didn't have like a piano bench. So it was set for like the standing one. And what I did for my standing desk, the keyboard's off. So it's not making any noise. I just put my laptop right on top of it. And I was like writing while I was standing up. And that was really Mm -hmm. helpful. You know, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And even like writing outside can be helpful just to like be out in the fresh air and the sunlight, which right now it's too cold, which makes me mad. (laughs) But if you can, it's really nice. It is. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe I need to write on the top of a mountain while I'm hiking. Mm -hmm. That should be my goal. That way, as I write, be active. And, like, make content at the same time. There you go. (laughs) Yes. I want to do the whole thing where, like, you rent, like, an Airbnb somewhere that's really scenic, like, out in the woods or out on a mountain or whatever, and just take the dogs with me and then just write for, like, a whole week and, like, just take a bunch of videos and pictures and sit outside. And that would be the dream. Yeah. One day I'm going to organize a writer's retreat. It's going to happen. Maybe this is the year. But I'm yeah. not thinking about it because I have to accomplish my own goals. But it's just an idea. It's floating yeah. out there. <laughs> like, you know what? There's 12 months in the year. You've got plenty yeah. of time to get to the point where you're ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the nice thing about goals is some of them seem really far off or unreasonable. But it's like, I mean, think about wherever you are now from wherever you were last year this time. And it's like a lot can happen in a year. And you can do a lot in a year. So you never know. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Let's let's actually, because I love doing these exercises. Like, what were you doing January 2022? Like, what's different about wow. your life, like from then to now? <laughs> Good lord. Um, oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I I started writing my first 
book in like October and then finished it in December and then published in January. So this time last year, I was like full blown panicked and so terrified to publish the first book. I had no idea what I was doing. Everything seemed so scary. I remember while I was writing the book, I refused to look up anything about publishing because I didn't want to scare myself out of doing it. (laughs) Because I was like, I'm too, I'm too scared. If I look at it, it's going to get worse. It's going to feel like bigger and scarier. And now it's like nothing. Like, I mean, it's it's still scary to publish a book, but the process of actually putting it on Amazon doesn't scare me at all. Um, but that was so terrifying to me. La- I mean, this time last year, so I hadn't even published it yet. So I didn't, I was still, and at this time last year, my mom, bless her heart, I love my mother. She, <laughs> she, but she, she had kind of wanted me to keep teaching Um, I think because to her it was a safe career, one that she understood. And so when I said that I was going to try self-publishing, she's really good at being like, okay, you you do whatever you need to do. But she wasn't excited about it at all. Um, And she had never read read anything I'd written before. And so she was kind of like, I don't think this is going to work kind of thing. But she was kind of kind of keeping it to herself. But I was like, you're a terrible liar. Um, (laughs) So this time last year, like she didn't really think it would work. Um, and then now fast forward to this year, uh, I've got two books done and I've been on Instagram for over a year now, which is a whole heck of a lot scary, less scary than it was to begin with. And now my mom is like my biggest supporter and she's like, she loves everything I write. And she's like, no, you need to keep doing this. And she's like, you know, constantly like, do you have enough money to keep going? Do you need any help? And I'm like, no, I'm okay, mom. But she's just like, she wants to be so supportive now versus last year. It was like, I felt like I was trying to convince everybody I could do it. And now this year, I think everyone's like, either they think I can do it or they realize I'm too stubborn to stop. So (laughs) whichever. So it feels very different from this year to last year. And I feel like my confidence has, is so different than it was last year. Because after, I think doing new things and then accomplishing them gives you this sense of, oh, I really can do whatever I choose to do, whatever I set my mind to, which is a really cool feeling. So very different from this year to last year for me. What about you? Oh, it's crazy to think about like last year in January. I didn't even know you yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. Oh yeah. my gosh. So yeah. And I remember one of the things that I wanted, like at that time last year, I was like, man, I really want like some new, like writing friends who I just feel, I don't know. Like I just felt because I had taken a break from Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was another thing. I wasn't really like I started my Instagram in 2020. And I kept it going for about a year. And then I was very sporadic. And then I took like huge breaks. So I wasn't really working actively on it. I lost a lot of followers, you know, as it, as it goes, like it was just kind of yeah. like stagnant. In January, I don't even think I had started to work. And I don't think I started to work on it again until March. So like that was like, I wasn't even working on Instagram. I was writing a book. I was writing a novella at that point. And I had decided I was going to like be a little more fluid in pants and work on something that I didn't tell Instagram about because I came on and I was working on this historical fantasy and everybody knew about it and everybody really wanted to read it. And I just... I was like, I don't know if I can write this. I like this book so much. I feel like I'm not a good enough writer for this book. Mm. And I was like tying myself up in knots as as to what I wanted to publish first. Yeah. So so I just was off Instagram. I kind of took a break. I was just writing. And yeah, that's where I was. (laughs) And I didn't, man, I had no idea. I was kind of like open to everything at that point. I was like, I'm going to like kind of start over and like rediscover like who I am as a writer, what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I had given up like all my previous plans from like 2020 and 2021. And I kind of went back to the same thing that I was doing before. I really did. But I like that I had that, that time to yeah. evaluate, you know, and I'm so glad I met you too. That's actually like yeah. a crazy story. Because so it was springtime, I was more on Instagram. I was like, man, like, I wish like I had like writer friends who like were the same age, were like similar mm-hmm. situations. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't even think I had the time zone thing in, but that's so yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that worked out really well. Yeah, because I was like, I just don't feel like I know a lot of 
other young women around my same age with similar goals. And not that you can't be friends with people who are in college or with kids yeah. or like doing different things. It's just, I don't know. It's nice to have someone who like kind of understands where you're at. Yeah. And so I wanted that. I was like, Oh, I really want this. And then like I became acquainted with you on Instagram. And I remember the one day realizing like, Hey, like you should reach out and like, you know, try and get to know Rachel better because she's the same age as you. She's like in the same situation. And I'm just like such a shy and like closed off person. Like I'm always telling myself, Oh, well, you're not going to get along with this person because of this, or like, it's not going to work out because of that. I'm just like very judgmental before I get to know someone. I'm just always thinking of ways that like, we're not going to be friends, you know, yeah, whatever yeah. it is someone do. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like God was telling me like, you prayed for this, like, here you go. And then yeah. I did, I was like, okay, I'm going to like reach out. I forgot how it happened. I think I was like, oh, we should do writing sprints together. Yeah. You were the first person I sprinted with. Yeah. And we're in the same time zone and it worked out. We were both like, you know, doing the full-time writing thing. So Mm -hmm. it just worked out so perfectly. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy to think about. And I've met a couple other new friends too, writer friends. And I actually met somebody from writing Instagram last year just because you know that was something I was praying for and it it was fulfilled and that was really nice but yeah in January like none of that like I just I was like felt really isolated you know Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah I agree I I would add that to my list too that this time last year doing this whole thing was very much an alone kind of thing where I was like locked up in my office by myself I was on Instagram And I was like posting things, but I wasn't really communicating with anybody necessarily. Like I hadn't really built any friendships. And so I felt very much alone while I was writing that first book all the time. It was actually an exciting time to do something new, but it was also kind of depressing because it was just like so isolated and so on your own. And then your whole world is through social media now, which is so weird. Um, And I, but I hadn't really built any relationships then. And then now it's like, we've got like some groups going and like we have this podcast going and like I met you and I met a few other people and it's like in some ways my thing is I assume that whatever friendships I start that I will be more invested than the other person so they're not really going to want to be friends that way as much as I want to be friends and so I don't it almost feels like I'm like preemptively rejecting myself in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, no, they're not going to want to be as good of friends as I want to be. Um, and in some cases, yeah, there were people that I thought we'd be friends and we didn't really end up becoming super close, but then there's people like you where I didn't even know I was going to meet you. And now I'm like, Oh my gosh, I have these people that I like really depend on in life. And I'm so grateful for, which is a huge deal. You don't need a lot of people, just a few that you really feel like want to be a part of your life is a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And that makes me wonder how common it is because I think the same thing too. I feel like, oh, I'm more invested in this friendship. Yeah. And so I wonder, maybe everybody thinks that, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a friend, affirm your friends more often, people. They probably doubt whether or not you love them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a crazy year. Everything's different. So different. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, in a really good yeah. way. I can't believe, like, looking back to January 2022 mm-hmm. to now, like, yeah. it really has been crazy. <laughs> yeah, which I think it kind of goes back to kind of stepping out in faith a little bit. Like, if you if you open yourself up to just a little bit of, like, change or effort mm-hmm. to try and meet people or do something different or pursue a goal or, you know, some kind of thing you want to accomplish – so many good things can happen. It's just you kind of have to take that step of putting yourself in a position where those things can happen. Like if you hadn't gotten back on Instagram, we wouldn't have met each other, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's like if you just do like just a few small baby steps to put yourself out there, so many great things can happen. Yeah, I agree. And that really is. I mean, when I think about what really changed my life, it was those scary moments. Mm-hmm. But like I decided to do it anyway, like – um you know, like with my fiance, like that was really scary at the beginning of the year. 
you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, like, what if this goes wrong? Like, if it doesn't work out, what if my heart gets broken again? Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, you, you have to go for it. Like, you can't, yeah. you can't love somebody without being vulnerable and like accepting that risk because it's not really love, then it's like selfish kind of yeah. thing. And like that changed my life in so many other ways, but you yeah. had to do that scary thing first, you know? Yes. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. I feel like so much of the time we kind of, we kind of sabotage ourselves by staying silent about things and not like being open and honest and not taking the chance. Like some, there have been times when like I've posted things on Instagram very vulnerably about what I'm going through or how I feel. And I'm like, nobody's gonna comment or they're all going to pity me or something. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. I'm like, no, a bunch of people felt the same way I did. And it's like, I think, I mean, and not to get too spiritual on everybody, but I feel mm -hmm. like the devil really wants you to stay silent about things and like fear and insecurity and all that stuff. It breeds in like the dark and the silence. So it's when you actually like step out and say things and build relationships and are honest and kind of do the scary thing that those things, they're not as big anymore which is really nice and very freeing. No, oh, I agree. I think, yeah, like if we're talking about like spiritual warfare, like he really does use that stuff, you know, embarrassment yeah. and insecurity mm -hmm. and all yeah. of that to like kind of keep you back. <laughs> and you just have to be like, mm -hmm. no, like, and you can feel all those things, but yeah. it's what you choose to do despite yeah. how you feel, you yes. know, and that's like, and that's like, I think we're like, you really step into like your path that God is leading you on. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's the important part is it's valid to feel afraid or nervous or stressed or scared or whatever. It's doing things in spite of those feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Which is, I feel like, which is what writing books is all about. Cause you know, you have your hero and mm -hmm. you know, they're scared, but they do things anyway. And that's what makes them yeah. heroes, you know? Yes. Yeah. You know, you have to just do it scared, guys. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Just this year, 2023, if we have to leave you with anything, I'd say, like, this is your book. And, like, you're the heroine mm -hmm. or the hero, like, whoever you are. And, like, you know, how do you want your story to look like? Yes. You know, are you going to push past the fear and take those steps to write mm -hmm. the book that you want to write in your life? Yeah. Actual, <laughs> 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 or figuratively here. Yeah. <laughs> Since our goals are writing books, this yeah. starts to get into one of those mirror situations. But <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, don't wait for somebody else to write your story for you. Don't feel like, oh well, God hasn't even got to my first chapter yet. Where like the the exciting part would begin. Like the exciting part begins whenever you decide it begins. Like, mm -hmm. do something that kind of makes you a little bit scared and just see what kind of rewards come your way, even if it's something really small. Yeah. I think that's my that's my personal goal for this year is to do more things that make me slightly uncomfortable. Just enough yeah. that you're, like, pushing yourself to grow. Yeah. And that goes right along with confidence. Yes, which is your word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I planned it that way, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well should we leave them with anything else oh I can't think of anything else I would just say yeah like be um, the hero or the heroine of your own story like make this year you know the whatever like for me it'd be the 28th book of my life <laughs> <laughs> this is a series yeah you want that 28th book to be exciting <laughs> yes yes you want it to be triumphant at the end, you know? <laughs> I agree. Be brave, guys. Step out. Start your story now. Don't wait for it to come to you. And be nice to yourself with your resolutions because it can be very <laughs> can be very a critical thing to do. So be nice to yourselves. Have some grace. It's a new start. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's a, pretty much it. Pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Yeah, well, happy 2023, everyone. And yes. we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. <laughs> Bye. Bye.